right, greetings from Seattle, Washington. My banjo and I, that I travel with always, greet you from 8,000 miles away. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Seattle. Uh, it has not been like that for the last few weeks. The month of March was the most rain we've had probably in 30 years. It caused some tremendous slides, and in fact, several dozen people died. Uh, some say it was a result of poor public policy, that the environment was not protected. Trees were cut down on this cliff, and as a result, water was able to wash away uh, this, this huge cliffside uh, and wipe out a bunch of houses. I tell you that because we all know public policy makes a huge impact in our lives. You see it in Egypt every day. We see it in this country in both small and big ways. We've got to get better at our public policies. And fortunately, we have a opportunity now that was not available to us 15 years ago. And that new ability is to be able to tap into not just our own smarts, our own individual smarts, but this global brain. And so this class that we will be engaged in is going to be about developing your own global brain. So what do I mean by that? Well, it used to be that if you studied hard, worked hard, you could get pretty smart and hopefully be able to do good things with that. And today that's still true. But we have this other ability, which is now we can tap into other, the brains of other people and other machines even to get smarter and, and to problem solve better because now it just isn't one person, but we're crowdsourcing. We're being able to discuss things with a, a very large number of people, billions of people essentially across the world to be able to find solutions to problems that we all face. So this course is all about learning how to do that better, developing your global brain. And we're going to do it over the next nine, ten weeks together from the first of April till the first of June. How is that going to be done? Well, there's about a dozen of you there, about a dozen of us here at Seattle University, and this is the second course that Kareem and I have done together with students. And I'm excited about this one because it's going to be done different from the first one. We're really going to be focusing on um, how you develop this network of people that you can tap into to be smarter and to make change. We'll be learning about how we work with each other across cultures, across miles, and virtually. You know, the interesting thing about working virtually today is it used to be almost all of our work, almost exclusively, was done in face-to-face -face situations, or it might be done over the phone. Um, but increasingly over the last 20 years, what we face today is that, for many of us, most of our work, most of our interactions happen virtually, over email, over Facebook texting back and forth, leaving messages over, over uh, Skype, um, all these ways in which we're connecting. And the beauty of all this is we can connect virtually anywhere in the world to do it. So now, instead of just my own single brain, I've got everybody's brain working together with me, and you do too. We just have to learn how to do it better. So in this course, you will be working with a small team of people from Seattle and looking at one aspect of this, which is how do we change public policy? How do we engage in changing institutions, improving institutions, and use these tools to both find solutions and then to implement solutions? And the great thing is we have some examples, current day examples that we can use and learn from right today. For you, your whole country is in the midst of enormous change, as you know, and many of you are engaged in that change. You're playing some role in helping change and improve your country. You're in the middle of it. 
And we want to learn from you. What are you finding out and doing that? What tools are you using to get smarter? How are you connecting with one another? And the students you'll be working with here, a small cadre of students, uh, they will be looking at social issues that they're particularly interested in and are affected by and have been involved in. And you'll learn more about that in the coming weeks, but you'll be exchanging your expertise with each other. And the tools you'll be using, Facebook, making videos like this one and exchanging them with one another on Facebook, live video conferencing. All of you will have an opportunity to test out crowdsourcing to come up with some specific problems that you want to get answers to and send it out there and see what you come up with. You'll have an opportunity to begin a blog where you're producing, distributing, and then engaging with people to develop your network of brain power. And we hope you also will, along with the students here, be developing a list, a small, it'll be a small number, but a growing number, we hope, of people who you feel like could be most helpful to you and you want to stay in touch with longer term. In, in essence, it's like a brain trust. People who you can call on and they can call on you over time because you care about the same things and they bring different skill sets to the table that you all can learn from. So at the end of this nine, 10 weeks, you will have developed both methods and individuals who are part of your global brain. And in the process, we hope you'll meet some people who you come to appreciate, admire, care about, and want to be involved with, um, both short-term or long-term. You'll learn some about U.S. culture and the issues it faces. We'll learn more about Egypt, its culture, and some of the issues you face and how you're confronting them, and hopefully have a lot of good times in between. Who knows, maybe some of you will play instruments uh, for us to hear from too. You won't just have to listen to a banjo. So, I look forward to it and we will see you online and in person over the next few weeks.